necessary conditions for W equal to FZ2 represents a conformal mapping. The theorem is, if W equal to FZ represents a conformal transformation of domain D in the Z plane into domain D of the W plane, then FZ is an analytic function of Z in D. We have to prove that FZ is an analytic function, right? And we have to reach the CR equations for that. And that is the Koji-Raman equations. So we have u plus iota v is equal to uxy plus iota vxy, where u and v are depending on x and y variables. So that u is a function of x and y, and v is a function of x and y. Let elementary arc length in Z plane be, let's say, ds. And elementary arc length in W plane be, d sigma. And because it is an elementary arc length, so ds square is equal to dx square plus dy square. And d sigma square is equal to du square plus dv square. For the w plane this is for the z plane and this is for the w plane now du can be written as because u is a function of x and y so du can be written as curly u over curly x dx plus curly u over curly y dy right and dv can be written as curly v over curly x dx plus curly v over curly y dy. Hence, d sigma square is equal to, what is d sigma square? It is du square plus dv square. So let's square them. So this is curly u over curly x dx plus curly u over curly y dy and squaring, adding this to square of dv that is curly v over curly x dx curly v over curly y dy square so when you open this you will get the format as in dx square plus dy square plus 2 dx dy Whatever you get with dx square, let me denote this that with e. Whatever you get with dy square, let me denote that with g. And whatever you get with 2 dx dy, let me denote that with f. Where e is curly u over curly x whole square plus curly v over curly x whole square. This you will get. And f is equal to curly u over curly x into curly u over curly y plus curly v over curly x into curly v over curly y and g is equal to curly u over curly y whole square plus curly u over curly x whole square. Now if I take the ratio of d sigma with ds, right, what is ds? I'm having ds square is equal to dx square plus dy square. Here the coefficient of dx square is 1. And the coefficient of dy square is 1. And there is no 2 dx dy. That is, there is no 2 dx dy. That means the coefficient is 0 for 2 dx dy. So if I take the ratio of ds with d sigma, because I'm having for d sigma square, the coefficient of dx square as e with dy square as g and the coefficient of d dx. And the coefficient of 2 dx, 2 dy is f. So now, d sigma is to ds. This is independent of the direction. Independent of the direction means it is the condition for the isognal transformation, right? So this ratio is independent of direction if just writing the ratios of the coefficients of dx square first, that is e is to 1, right? This is equal to, yes, f is to 0.
because there is no term do dx dy in ds square. So this is equal to then g and the coefficient for dy square is 1 for ds square. Right. So it is independent of the direction if these are equal to say h square where this h is non-zero and is depending upon x and y only. So now if I put the value of e and g over here, I get the conditions for the isogonal transformation as it is independent of the direction. The condition is, all right, let me put the value of e over here. So what is e? It is, yes, it is curly u over curly x whole square plus curly v over curly x whole square. So let me write the value for e as curly u over curly x whole square plus curly v over curly x whole square. So this is equal to this h square and this is equal to, let me equate this with this g. So g is curly u over curly y whole square plus curly v over curly y whole square. Right? And because this f is 0, so writing the value of f over here and getting the second condition to be curly u over curly x multiply with curly u over curly y plus curly v over curly x into curly v over curly y equal to 0. Let me mark this as equation 1 and this is equation 2. Now, when the equation 1 is satisfied, it is satisfied for if I take curly u over curly x as h cos alpha and curly v over curly x as h sin alpha. If I write these values for this, then I get h square, right? And curly u over curly y should be h, let's say, h cos beta, right? The second angle to be as beta and curly v over curly y to be as h sine beta. When we square these two, I get h square. So let me uh, write this set as curly u over curly x as h cos alpha and curly v over curly x as h sine alpha. So that if I square and add them, I will get h square. And for this, let me put curly u over curly y as with another angle h cos of beta and curly v over curly y as h sine of beta. So now let's substitute these values in 2 now here. So on substituting, I get just multiply these two. I get h square common and cos of alpha, this cos beta, the product, plus then taking the product of these two, I get h square, that outside. So this is sine of alpha, sine of beta, and this is equal to zero from here. All right, now this is nothing but the formula that is cos of alpha minus beta. So this is equal to zero as h is non-zero. So this implies alpha minus beta is equal to plus minus pi by two. So let's take first alpha minus beta to be as pi by two. Then alpha is equal to beta plus pi by two. Right. I need the value of alpha first. So curly u over curly x is, yes, what is curly u over curly x? It is h cos of alpha. So this is h cos of alpha. That is beta plus pi by 2. This will give me negative h sine of beta. And curly v over curly x is h sine of alpha. So this is beta plus pi by 2 that is equal to positive h 
cos of beta. Also, curly u over curly y is equal to, yes, this is already h cos beta. So, this is h cos of beta. No need to put the value of beta because I'm already having beta over here. So, it's okay with beta. So, curly v over curly y is equal to h sine of beta. Hence, from this to, from this and this, what I get? Curly u over curly x is negative of curly v over curly y. And from this two I get curly v over curly x is equal to curly u over curly y. These are not the CR equations. Right? Okay. So similarly, let's take alpha minus beta to be equal to negative pi by 2. So we get beta minus pi by 2 and when I put the value of alpha like before I have done for the equation 3 so we get curly u over curly x is equal to curly v over curly y and curly v over curly x is equal to negative of curly u over curly y yes the equation 4 are the Cauchy Riemann equations these are the CR equations. Hence, Fz is an analytic function because the, these are the well-known CR equations showing that Fz is analytic function. This is what we need to prove? Yes. So what can you say about equation 3? These equations. These becomes the Cauchy Raman equations if I replace V with negative V. Yes? Replacing V with negative V or writing negative V for V, that is, if we take the image figure obtained by the reflection in the real axis of the W plane. So these equations 3 correspond to the isogonal but not a conformal transformations right equations 4 corresponds to the conformal transformations hence it is shown that if the transformation w equal to fz is conformal then fz must be an analytic function of z hence proof thank you